Hello. I come to you today with a, a message titled Israel's Great Sacrifices in the War with Hamas. And we're going to focus on unraveling the moral bankruptcy of the charges brought against Israel by South Africa, the liberal Islamists and Satanist mobs on the streets of Western Europe and the United States, and of course, the ICC. The charges brought against Israel are, number one, genocide against Palestinians, attempt to exterminate the Palestinian population, and using food and as an instrument of war in the Palestinian war, the war with Palestine. I want to begin by stating that um, I consider South African leaders, the current crop of South African leaders, as some of the most corrupt in Africa. For them to have so soon forgotten what the what appetite really was, the dragon it was, the wickedness it presented. For them to liken Israel to an apartheid state means watering down the brutality that was meted down, meted out to the Africans in South Africa by the apartheid regime. It waters down the suffering the South Africans went through in the course of the apartheid and makes nonsense of the sacrifices made by great South Africans, including Nelson Mandela, to overcome the apartheid regime. It's amazing that South African leaders could actually accept data from Hamas, the most untrustworthy party in this conflict, and actually went ahead to go to court with this unverified data and under false premises projected by Hamas. I need you to understand who Hamas is and what Hamas's crimes are from October 7, 2023. Hamas invaded Israel. Within three, four hours, they had butchered over 1,200 Israeli unarmed civilians. They raped women and girl children on the streets, mutilated their genitals and faces. They cut off people's heads and actually used them to play ball. And then, of course, they burned whole families with children in their homes and took hundreds of hostages. Just so you can understand how brutal and demonic they are, they actually also videoed these atrocities so they could entertain and show how brave they are to their supporters back home and to the satanist, liberal and Islamist mobs, supporters in Western Europe and the United States of America. The mainstream media is in no way different from these mobs on the streets of Western Europe and the United States because they are driven by the same passion, hatred for Israel, anti-Semitism, which blinds them to the reality of what actually took place and which was what started this war against Hamas by Israel. It's sad to see reporters, CNN, BBC reporters being so unprofessional taking sides in a conflict that 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 clearly defines that is clearly that clearly defines Israel's rights to defend ourselves, Israel's rights to exist. CNN and BBC reporters feel the most pain for every victory that the Israeli forces, the IDF, reports from the battlefield. Now Israel Israel's sacrifices in this war are quite enormous, but I'm going to just highlight a few of them so you understand what I'm saying. Number one is the element of surprise. No good soldier or no good fighter, whether military warfare, business warfare, or any other kind of warfare, would want to give up the element of surprise because the element of surprise, to a large extent, defines your victory. But in the war with Hamas, Israel sacrifices the element of surprise so as to save Palestinian civilian lives while Hamas is doing everything in her power to sacrifice Palestinian civilian civilians in this war so she could gain advantage over Israel in propaganda warfare which is aided by the mainstream media. 
Now, I want us to understand that if Hamas embeds herself among civilians, she digs tunnels underneath civilian homes, underneath civilian schools, civilian hospitals, civilian playgrounds. Hamas fires missiles at Israel from civilian homes, civilian hospitals, civilian schools, civilian playgrounds, making these locations legitimate military targets. Yet, Israel, before she responds, prints flyers and sends to these locations, drops them there telling the civilians to vacate because they are going to bomb the place. After that, they call their phone numbers and tell them, vacate these locations, we are going to bomb these places. And finally, they knock on their roofs by dropping dirt bombs on their roofs to alert them to the bomb, to the fact that they were going to, their missiles were coming, they were going to bomb this place. And guess what? Hamas forces the civilians to remain in these buildings, these locations, so that they could be killed by Israeli fire and their body counts used as propaganda against Israel. According to Sinwa, these sacrifices of Palestinian civilians is necessary for their for, for, for Hamas's victory in this war. In effect, Hamas is deliberately sacrificing civilians while the mainstream media makes it her duty to blame Israel for the death of these civilians. Those who accuse Israel of deliberately targeting civilians clearly are morally bankrupt. These people have given up their humanity to such an extent that they could deny real facts, truths, in order to support lies. Number two of Israel's sacrifices is the loss of the increased casualties by Israeli forces and the loss of military equipment. Now, when you have alerted your enemy that you are coming to attack this location, he does two things or three things. Number one, he moves his forces out of those locations so you don't get to kill them. He moves his equipment out of those locations so you don't get to destroy them. And three, he prepares for you. So, giving up the element of surprise by Israeli forces, by the, by the IDF, in, implies higher casualties for IDF soldiers, and of course, higher casualties with respect to military equipment. So, IDF sacrifices such great, make so much great sacrifices to save civilian lives. In view of this, charges of genocide against the IDF is, uh, is a manifestation of moral decadence, the kind that the world has not seen in a long time. You need to realize that in this war, the, the, the ratio of combat and death combatants to death civ um, 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 civilians is one to one. No nation in the world has ever achieved this. The IDF does everything she could to save civilian lives, while Hamas does everything she could to sacrifice civilian lives so she could win the propaganda warfare in the mainstream media and, of course, the social media. Karim Khan of the ICC is a disgrace to the legal profession. In spite of all this evidence, he went ahead to tarnish Israeli leaders and, 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 uh, and uh, tarnish the state of Israel. Of course, the IDF also. I believe he's doing a hatchet job. What he's doing is never intended. It's never intended to get a, a legal victory against Israel, just to tarnish and demonize Israel. And of course, to strengthen anti-Semitism across Western Europe and the United States of America. The top thing that Israel has sacrificed in this battle is goodwill. Israelis, traditional allies, Israel's traditional allies, are literally abandoning Israel because they are they are carried by the propaganda which the mainstream media is, is, is spreading the lies and then of course being politicians they are pressurized by by liberal satanists and um, uh, uh, mobs on the streets of the United States and Western Europe making them to be willing to buy into these lies and be willing to sacrifice Israel I want to tell you that I want to state my conviction that Israel's survival in the days ahead will depend on Israel's willingness and ability to abandon her traditional allies, and that includes the United States, and of course, all her Western allies, 
and forge ahead. Israel needs to forge new allies in this war with Hamas, Hezbollah, and the others. I need you to understand that since October 7, Hezbollah has fired and, and Hamas and, and the Houthis have fired over 20,000 missiles into Israel. Yet somebody thinks Israel should not defend herself. Somebody who sleeps in the peace and safety of her own country is demonstrating that Israel is defending her, her citizens and defending her right, their right to exist. Well, I need, Russia and um, Israel are currently fighting existential wars, necessitated and battered by the West. Western interest, especially United States interest, is suffocating the world. United States interest is suffocating Israeli interest. As a matter of fact, America's interest is it, 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 gotten so suffocating that it's beginning to threat, is threatening that Israel's very existence. I make haste to add that is America's America's interest under the liberal controlled government of liberal controlled governments, of course, of Joe Biden and before him Barack Obama. If Israel does not fight back and stop Hamas and Hezbollah now, the next October 7 might turn out to be the last of Israel. And um, Mr. if Mr. Netanyahu, the Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel is watching me, sir, I want you to know that if you fail to accomplish the task of completely neutralizing Hamas and Hezbollah, history will not be fair to you. The blood of all Israelis who will be subsequently killed and all peace-loving citizens who will be killed by these Islamists will be on your head. The liberal world, the Islamist world, and the Satanist world are too determined, are so, are so desperate now to set up the one world government, which in reality is satanic. They need chaos to achieve this. That's why the war in Ukraine is going on. They had hoped that by now, Putin would have nuked Ukraine. America does not want Russia and Cuba, her backyard, but America is fighting in Ukraine to, to, for the right to be in Ukraine, in Russia's background. At the moment, Israel is literally faced with the same war. I need us to understand that the war between Israel and Hamas is a fallout of that war between Russia and Ukraine. As of September 2023, the mobs in Western Europe and the United States have turned against their government's involvement in this war in Ukraine. They were protesting against it, against it and as a matter of fact, in the American Senate, it had become a, become a boiling point and have gotten to the point where they had concluded that American weapons and American monies would no longer be sent to Ukraine. This war between Israel and, and Hamas had to be activated to drag the, the, the mob's attention away from Ukraine to Israel and Hamas. Of course, they calculated properly. Anti-Semitism was going to definitely pull the attention of the mob from Ukraine to Israel. And within weeks, it worked. The mob abandoned the Ukraine and the Russian war to focus totally on the Israel-Hamas war, demonizing Israel at all costs, while the liberal-controlled governments of Western Europe and the United States are now free to continue to sponsor the war in Ukraine against Russia. There is urgent need to put an end to this pervasive manipulation of, of human affairs and, and prevent these liberal satanist and Islamist forces from dragging humanity to her destruction. As a matter of fact, we are advocating the Commonwealth of Israel as a new global body that will represent humanity and speak for humanity at all times, standing up for justice, ensuring that peace and prosperity gets to every man, every home, and every nation. Commonwealth of Israel is a platform where Christian nations, Christian organizations, lovers of Israel, and all peace-loving nations can come together and deliberate about affairs of humanity and ensure that, that, that the earth is kept and preserved until Shiloh comes. In Jesus' name, our mandate is justice. And in order for me to, to get you to understand how, how passionate we are about this mandate, I want, you to, I want to get to expose to you the mandate that God gave Jesus Christ, which he came to the earth. Because Jesus, Jesus didn't just come to the earth, 
He came to fulfill a mission. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1 to 4, New Living Translation declares, He says, Look at my servant whom I strengthen. He is my chosen one who pleases me. I put my spirit upon him. He will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout. Note carefully if I continue. He says, I will put my spirit upon him and he will bring justice to the nations. If you're a Christian, you're born again, you're filled with the Holy Ghost. This is why you have the Holy Spirit in you. That you might be emboldened to stand up and cause justice to reign all over the world. He continues. He will not shout or raise his voice in public. He will not crush the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle. He will bring justice to all who have been wronged. He will not falter or lose heart until justice prevails throughout the earth. Even distant lands beyond the sea will wait for his instructions. This is the mandate that God gave Jesus Christ. And this is the mandate that Jesus gave us because he declares in John 20, 21, he said, as my father has sent you, sent me, so send I you. He declares, the Bible declares in Isaiah chapter 32, verse 1 to 5. In the message Bible, it says, but look, a king will rule in the right way and his leaders will carry out justice. Who is this king? Jesus Christ. Who are his leaders? We are as Christians. He says, each will stand as a shelter from high winds, provide safe cover in stormy weather. Each will be cool running, cool running water in patched land. A huge granite outcrop giving shade in the desert. desert. To who? The poor, the weak, the captives. God has ordained us to be a solution to their problems, to be hope to them. He says, anyone who looks will see, anyone who listens will hear. Why? Because we will put an end to the deception and the manipulation. He says the impulses will the impulsive will make sound decisions. The tongue tied will speak with eloquence because all the intimidation will have been stopped. No more will fools become celebrities nor cooks. Crooks will be rewarded with fame. When Christians are in charge, criminals, satanists, Islamists, and terrorists, and of course liberals will not be allowed to take authority and drag the earth, humanity, to her destruction. I want to tell you, speaking to Christians and all peace-loving people on earth, stop being the silent majority. Look, Satanists, Islamists, liberals, terrorists are speaking up and making their voices heard. They are reshaping nations, reshaping the world to her destruction. Why we keep quiet? I want to tell you that Jesus never wanted to be a part of any silent majority. When Jesus got to the temple, he saw they had turned into a market. He hated it like a lot of Jews also did. But quite unlike them, he didn't keep quiet. He went and got a cane and whipped them and chased them out of the temple and told and said to them, My father's house should be called a house of prayer and not a den of thieves. Stop being the silent majority. Now, if you're watching me and you're not born again, I implore you to give your life to Jesus Christ so that you can be a part of this end time moves of the spirit because great things are going to happen. Hallelujah. If you want to give your life to Jesus, just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the son of the living God. You came from heaven to the earth and the flesh. You suffered and you were crucified on the cross of Calvary. You died and you were buried. On the third day, you resurrected for my salvation. Thank you, Lord, because I'm born again. If you said this prayer, I love you so much. I want to pray for you now. Lord, I thank you for these words. I cover them with your grace. I strengthen them with your glory. Hallelujah. I declare the enemy will have nothing upon these ones. They will grow in bound in the knowledge of thee and become pillars in your church, bringing nations to righteousness in Jesus' name. The Lord said to me, stretch out your hands, I'll heal the sick. I perform notable miracles and even raise the dead. If you require this grace anywhere in your body, your family, your nation, take it in Jesus' name. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name.